All right. Now I started the YouTube video. They missed all that. Goodness. Sorry, YouTube. All right. Energy ball. Go back to your energy balls. Hi, Steve. All right. So keep making an energy ball, Steve, and make an energy ball and come powerfully into the space where you are. And I want to I want to read so this is going to sound very contradictory but this is the this is the best way to to do this right now. Okay. So what I'm telling you is focus on your own reality, being what what realities and what vibrations are you available for, okay? You're going to choose the vibrations and the realities that you are making yourself available for as you bless, forgive, respect free will choice and love the people who are choosing a different reality, who are near you. So they're in a lower vibrational reality. They're available for lower vibrational reality. And then um, you stay in the center always of your vortex, the law of attraction vortex. You focus on what you want. You focus on, good morning, rising. What realities I'm available for? Relax your bellies. As you know that you're surrounded by people who are available for different realities and their ego proves them right as your ego proves you right. That's why people um, fight or whatever. It's not necessarily fighting, but it's like, we live in a beautiful world. Look at this bug, look at this rainbow, look at this. No, we don't, we live in a horrible world. Look at the fighting, look at the violence, look at the deaths, right? Same, if they're in the same. Okay, so relax your belly. So at the same time, I'm going to tell you, kind of let other people have their own, that's blessing, respecting their free will choice to see what they see, live the way they live, I'm going to tell you to keep your own vibration high, raise your own vibration. And now I'm going to tell you, you can use their, their, let's call it negativity or their lower vibrational realities. You can use their, whatever's happening around you. It's not happening to me. It's happening for me. You can use the, their suffering and their lower vibrational realities and their focus on negativity or whatever. They're, they don't realize that if they're focusing on what they don't want, they're creating more. They don't realize that what they're fighting, they're actually feeding. All right? Now, I'm going to tell you, you're going to use whatever's happening. It's happening for me, not to me. Okay? So, whatever challenges me is growing me. And I'm sure there's a cute bumper sticker, coffee mug way of saying that. And I'll be asking for those to drop in and I'll be posting those to the group. You don't grow in your comfort zone. So, so this week we're going to look forward to challenges or challenging people. Doesn't mean we're going to hug them. It doesn't mean we're going to try and change their reality. Relax your belly. Good. Big belly breathing. Shoulders back and down. Let yourself be as big as you are. Okay, good. All right, relax that belly. I'm going to read you a story. Keep focusing on your energy ball. I'm going to read you a story, and then we're going to play with that. Okay, it's from this book, Zen Shorts. It's a great, well, it's a great book to me. It's called A Heavy Load. Two traveling monks reached a town where there was a young woman waiting to step out of her sedan chair. The rains had made deep puddles, and she couldn't step across without spoiling her silken robes. So go ahead and close your eyes. She stood there, looking very cross and impatient. She was scolding her attendants. They had nowhere to place the packages they held for her, so they couldn't help her across the puddle. The younger monk noticed the woman, said nothing, and walked by. The older monk quickly picked her up, and put her on his back, transported her across the water, and put her down on the other side. She didn't thank the older monk. She just shoved him out of the way and departed. 
As they continued on their way, the young monk was brooding and preoccupied. After several hours, unable to hold his silence, he spoke out. That woman back there was very selfish and rude, but you picked her up on your back and carried her. Then she didn't even thank you. The older monk says, I set the woman down hours ago. Why are you still carrying her? Okay, so why am I talking about other people when I'm telling you not to think about other people and not, and not to try and disturb their reality? Because ironically, it takes um, what, what, what we want to do, if we set the intention of living our own lives peacefully and high vibrationally, and we set the intention not to allow other people's lower vibrational realities affect ours, it helps to talk or and think and use our contemplating thinking mind, right, to, to understand and talk about other people's realities just for now in order to have kind of a cushion and a way for you when you are in your life and you are in your vortex, when you get challenged in this way, your thinking and contemplative mind and then your intellect can help you go back eat more easily, more comfortably to where you want to be because we're breaking the ego. So the ego is going to want to react. Good, good. Nicole says, very similar thing happened to me this morning. Caught it and let that shit go. Very good. Now let's talk about this. If I'm by myself, I can raise my vibration pretty easily. When I find myself around other people who are um, tense or blah, 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 story, story, it's hard to hold my higher vibration. So my ego says, other people lower my vibration. Other people do this, other people do that to me. Okay, all right? So everybody understands that. So when I'm by myself, with my chickens, with my dogs, and I'm meditating or whatever, it's easy to raise my vibration. It's easy to hold a high vibration. But other people, story, 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 I'm giving my power of my mind over to randos around me. Fighting over toilet paper, whatever, you know? Good. Oh. Whoever I get mad at, I have just given them my power. This is not my language. This is like the new agey language. We give our power away and then we get mad at who took it. So, yes. So if your husband or your children are your challenge, just remember, I gave, I gave my power. I'm just going to take it back. This is what my book... The book for 10, 10, 20, 20 is going to really help with this. Okay, you guys are getting it. Now, it's on us, our folly. I don't know who I'm channeling now because it's not a word I would use. It's our folly to expect high vibrational behavior from a low vibrational person in a lower vibration. Okay? It's our folly to expect high vibrational behaviors from low vibrational people. All right, so, you know, fear's 100, and the news, and, and, and if you turn on the television, if you just turn, I mean, I don't, but if you turn on the television, it doesn't take very long before you can go, ah, they're, they're trying to put a fear vibration in fear, fear, fear. You could see it very easily. You have to remember, a lot of people watch a lot of television and they don't notice. It just gets in. So, a lot of people have, are, are experiencing low vibrational lives where fear is normal, anger is normal, you know, guilt. So people are guilty because they're white? That's silly. I mean, if you think about that rationally, why, what did you do? You were, you were just born. Your soul picked your meat suit details. You know? All right. But, but they're, they're just... <laughs> and they, they, apply, they apply logic to, the, to someone with a different meat suit. Well, they didn't choose it. Well, neither did you. 
Well, okay, let's hit that cognitive dissonance, right? So just relax your eyes, jaw, and shoulders. Big belly breathing. We're all gonna breathe together in a second. Let's see if there's anything else. Okay. See yourself sitting in the big white spotlight of the highest, holiest source creator energy or God or whatever you call it, whatever you're comfortable with, the term. Relax your lower belly. Just let, it's as if you've been holding, you know, it's as if you've been holding like a, a cannonball or a bowling ball up. Just let it fall in your lower abdomen. Just let it fall, shoulders back and down. Good. Just let go. <clears throat> when you find yourself expecting too much from another human being, someone disappoints you or they make you mad, use that to, uh, use that, use that. I catch myself I'm frustrated, I want to roll my eyes, whatever. It's okay, roll your eyes if you want. Bring it back in and ask your heart sincerely, how do I work with this for my own growth? Okay, good. I set the intention to use adversity to grow myself. So you're going to have people growing. And you're going to have other people challenging you. As we move towards killing the ego, and somebody made a great point saying, well, maybe call it, um, don't call it killing, can you just call it shedding the ego? Well, dogs shed hair, but they still have hair. And if we, and, and I had a client who said, please don't say meat suit, Ugh. And Neem Curly Baba says, say meat suit 50 times. So, the language that's too hard, oh, the wincing is done by the ego. Oh, change that, because I don't like it. George, George uh, Carlin has a skit about softening the words, and then we pretend the problem doesn't, you know, it softens the problem, then we don't look at it. And you shell shock, PTSD, all that. Anyway, relax your belly. Yes, we're killing the ego, but we're not fighting it to kill it. We're moving towards killing it. And I've had a couple people in this group text me on the side and say what, you know, that they've killed their ego and it was easy and the relief that happened after, or they sent it away, but they, but it was still killed, but there was no fighting it. If you fight your ego, you're engaging it. It loves that. So you're feeding it. So whatever you fight, you feed. Relax your belly, relax your shoulders. Liza says you need some peppermint and wild orange oil. All right, good. Relax eyes, jaw, shoulders. Good. Relax your belly. Now, it's doctor, there's a, I wouldn't know, I don't know if he's a doctor. On Facebook, there's a minister guy, Keenan K Y N A N Bridges, and he talks about fighting. He he has these dreams, and he talks about. He's a minister, so he talks about God. He knows the Bible. He talks about the Bible, but he talks about you have to fight. It's time to fight. Um. So I talk about not fighting, but he would be a good. Um, if you listen to him also, I can, if someone wants me to, I'll, I'm happy to send something that he says because he also says like the chakras, uh, people who do the chakras are like bad guys. <laughs> so, but he'll probably get a dream someday telling him that's not true. But he, he's finally getting dreams about like New World Order stuff and that like the media has deliberately divided people and so he's, that's the newest dream that I just saw. But he does talk about fighting and if you listen to me talk about not fighting and you listen to him talk about fighting, Sharon says he's awesome. Yeah, he comes across my, I don't know how, 
I'm not great at Facebook. I just want to come in and do my group and leave. But, you know, I see him and then the video will start playing. So I listen. So I think he's a valuable um, thing to listen to because I talk about not fighting. And he talks about fighting, but a lot of the other stuff that we come up with are similar. So if you listen to him talk about fighting, that there may be pieces that ring true for you about the way to fight or your, your soul can guide you to fighting. But really, you're, you need, people need access to their own third eyes. They need access to their own intuition. Okay. Good. Why are people fighting? They're all loving. Well, because they've been manipulated. It's just such a serious, high level of manipulation. It's, it's, you wouldn't, you wouldn't believe me. Okay. Well, maybe I'll, maybe I'll find one of his videos and I'll post it in, in here if anybody wants to take, I'm not going to put it on the top. I'll put it in like where you guys are talking now in the comments. Relax your bellies. Yeah. And just let it come through. Like Neem Curly Baba says, you have to read. This makes book three so clear. No fighting, observe and letting go. Acceptance of all. Okay, good. So that doesn't mean that I'm going to live fat, dumb, and happy while everything gets forced and forced and forced and then we all end up living in smart cities all completely controlled. Okay, Mindy, I will. Relax your belly. Yeah. I feel like I'm what I'm talking about is like a, a non-fighting fighting. It's just a being powerful, empowering. And, cho and choosing the realities that I will be available for and using the law of attraction and teaching other people to do the same. Where we're all these high vibrational empowered beings saying yes and no to certain realities. Dwight D. Eisenhower's granddaughter, Laura Eisenhower, um, she, sa she says, we do not consent. She calls things out and she says, like to, to Bill Gates for instance, we do not consent, you're out of, a, you're out of line and we do not consent. And so, is that fighting? I don't think so. It's calling something out and saying, I'm not available for that. We are not available for that. So it's a, it's a oh, and there's a song. I just saw this. Somebody, I, I don't know if it was in the UK. It was somewhere. It was a dollar vigilante at the beginning. And it was, we are the 99%. We are the 99%. So, and, there's, and then the verses go, you can shove this up your ass. You can shove this up your ass. You can shove this up your ass. And then it keeps going back. We are the 99%. So relax your belly. Okay, so I, I you know, this whole, he, he's talking about fighting and, and I feel like I'm talking about, it's, it's like we get to the same place, but I don't fight to get there. Just empowerment and saying yes and no to yes to desire, no to contrast. You know, I don't want, you know, I don't want that, so I say no to it. No thank you, but powerfully I say yes to what I do want. So I focus on freedom, you know, focus on the higher vibration, freedom, 900, freedom, um, empowerment, gratitude. So for me, if I, if I look at it like this, focus on what we want. What do you want? You focus your mind on what you want and you create it with the law of attraction, empowerment, high vibration, freedom. And when I think of fighting, I think of lowering my, va my vibration to feed what I don't want. Beating the drum of, as far as uh, Abraham Hicks says, beating the drum of these things you're fighting creates more. And we've seen that. I've seen that. All right, so you've got to find your way. Neem Curly Baba says, words are a minefield, first of all, because everybody uses different assigned meanings. And the assigned meanings information comes from the Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz. Relax your belly. Good, and just let yourself expand. And just come into a feeling of your own peaceful power where you're available, I am available, for higher vibrational realities. Good. Let your head turn if you want. There's a a little bit of left side stuff clearing, which is worthiness. 
Your highest vibrational reality most positively affects humanity and the entire world. The earth loves high vibrational humans because a high vibrational humanity raises the vibration of earth, allows earth's vibration to rise. Okay, so all these people destroying property and burning cars and creating garbage and hate in the world, Mother Earth is not sad for them, their loss. All right, relax your eyes, jaw, and shoulders. Good, allow your head to turn left if you want. I open to receive healing in my highest best interest. My highest best serves the highest best of all, raises the collective vibration of humanity and heals the planet. And as we heal the planet, then we can also heal the atmosphere. So if there's, there's some things going on in the atmosphere that are not healthy, you know, for us or um, Mother Earth. Good. Relax your shoulders. So where the direction I'm coming from is focusing on what you want. Using all of our minds. And as you raise your vibration, you can manifest more quickly. You're more powerful manifester. Good. Relax your belly. But the lower vibrational people I'm seeing have more of an effect on you higher vibrational beings than I would like to see. That's where, that's where I'm coming from now. That's what we're doing today. So I'm going to say that again. Sorry that it froze. All right. So what I'm seeing is you people in here with higher vibrations and choosing higher vibrational reality for yourself, others, the planet, I'm seeing, and I'm not like stalking any of you, I'm saying it's coming through my, uh, you know, texts and stuff with people who are in here. Good, relax your belly. I'm seeing that you high vibrational people, what's lowering your vibration is other people's shenanigans. It's just shenanigans. <laughs> It's lower vibrational shenanigans. So that's what we're talking about now. How to navigate this. Relax your bellies. Let your body move. However it feels good. Let your body guide you to release lower vibrational energy, stagnant energy. Good. Relax your belly. Good. You've got to really first really understand that lower vibrational people are not capable of higher vibrational people. Yes, it's just shenanigans. It's such a fun word for lower vibrational behavior. Okay, good, relax your belly. If you knew how beautiful you were, you would let your belly go. Good. Good. You know, it's your own ego but that tells you that you're too chubby or too ugly or your bags under your eyes are too this or whatever it is. Good. It's your own ego. Because I tell you, other people's egos want you to look hideous. Because it makes them look better. So other people's egos love chubby people and love this and love that. Relax your belly. <laughs> Good. All right, so focus on your contact points. Grow a root from, this, from your tailbone or your first chakra, if you know where that is, to the center of the earth. And just ground to Mother Earth. Wrap your root around the core of Mother Earth. And if you notice, it's like, I'm doing this. Mother Earth's going to pick me. She loves me more. That's the ego. Okay, relax your belly. Good. Just focus, just focus on the peace. And if you feel an energy that's frightened of this peace, doing nothing, looking for something to do, looking for something to think about, that's your ego. Good. Just 
Don't fight it. Don't fight it. That's my ego. God. Ironically, that gathering and focusing on peace does more for you than trying to figure out what's going on by turning on a television or a computer. Gathering this peace now. Good. Someone's head really wants to bow like a sacred thing. So, so follow that guidance if your head wants to bow. Good. And feel free to call this church. If you want to, if this, if churches are still shut down and you want to call this church, call it church. I'm, a, I'm actually a minister because of, people wanted me to marry them. <clears throat> I just don't want you to just take my, you know, dogma and make it your own if it doesn't, you, you've got to really build your own, let me help you build your own church, but you tell me where, where the steeple goes, you tell me where the pews go, <laughs> you tell me where the color, good, relax your eyes, John shoulders, relax your belly, good. <clears throat> what you really are is the most, it's such an incredible thing. My body is not me, it's mine to use. My mind is not me, it's mine to use. Four aspects of the mind, the thinking, contemplating mind, beautiful. Just send white divine healing light to your Thinking, contemplative mind. Now, just gratitude for my thinking and contemplating mind. You don't have to know where it is. You just set the intention and it happens. Good. So we're just going to send healing, divine energy, and gratitude. So you're going to direct divine healing energy to your thinking, contemplative aspect of the mind. And then for your part, you're going to send gratitude for your thinking, contemplative mind. Relax your eyes, drawn shoulders, smiling face. Belly, belly big. Good. All right, let's do three big belly breaths as we allow the thinking, contemplative mind to receive divine healing energy and gratitude. Uh, big belly, breathing in through the nose. Note the pause at the top of the breath. Grow your crown chakra at the top of your head. 1,000 petal lotus. And exhale slowly through your mouth. Push your belly down. Grounding, grounding, grounding. Good. Another big belly breath. Breathing in through the nose. Big belly. Note the pause at the top of the breath, thousand petal lotus at the top of your head. Just gather all that white light. Good. Exhale slowly through your mouth, grounding, grounding, grounding. Push your belly down. Push your belly down. Good word. Breathing in, last time, big belly. Note the pause at the top, thousand petal, big, big lotus. Exhale slowly through the mouth. All right. Sec the next aspect of the mind. Okay. It's the memory. It's the memory. Washing through the memory. Washing the ego out of the memory. The ego used the memory. I remember all the times I was victimized. Good. Relax your eyes, jaw, and shoulders. Watch that white light, that divine healing energy through your memory. The memory of your mind. This, this uh, second aspect of the mind, memory. Wash the ego out. All the times. The ego will remind you all these times. So things happened to you, but let's just allow them to have happened. 
all the shenanigans. Whatever happened, it happened. We keep it in the memory so that we can use it for recall. We can use it for intellect, thinking, and contemplating. But washing the ego now, relax your whole body. Washing the ego out of the memory now. Good. 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 Relax your eyes, jaw, and shoulders. Smiling face. Washing out your memory. See how big your memory is. Good. Get a feeling. Get a feel for how large your memory is. It's really vast. Relax your belly. You can use your breath to, to clear out the ego from your memory also. Good. Why would we wash the ego out of the memory? Because the ego makes us react. The peaceful warrior acts, the fool reacts. We're not taking away memory. We want all the memory intact. We want it clean, clear, organized, like a, a beautiful warehouse or a nice pantry. We want the memory organized, clean and clear, white and shining, so that the thinking and contemplative mind can recall and use the memory. And we also want the intellect to be able to have access to a nice, clean and clear, organized memory. But we do not want the ego input. We don't want the egoic versions of the story. We just want the pertinent, relevant facts. God. So that you're, you'll be more able to act always like an impartial judge than a reactive God. The peaceful warrior acts, the fool reacts. And in the Tao, they say the sage, which is the wise person. The Tao uses the word sage. This is what the sage does, and this is what the fool does. But just so you understand, when we, when we allow the ego to remain as the storyteller of our memories, it puts us in hero, victim, martyr perspective. As if it's fact. Hero, victim, martyr makes those into facts. It would bring great relief and ease if we just heard the story clearly from an impartial witness. Good, relax your belly without the ego. So clear that storehouse, your memory. Clear the egoic aspects the ego's not allowed to tell my story anymore. We're going to shut the ego out of the storehouse of memories. Good. Relax your eyes, jaw, and shoulders. My ego is not allowed to tell the stories anymore. Good. The, the clear and true facts remain in the memory storehouse complete, organized. Good. Feel your chest. Feel your chest. Good. Just notice your lungs and breathe deeply as you can. You may cough, that's okay. Do some really deep clearing breaths on your own. I don't want to guide you through that because I want you to follow your own because some people are going to want to do long, deep breaths. The lungs are affected by grief. The story that I use, the, the uh, example I use is my mom died. This is terrible. It's not fair. I'm a victim. Or my mom died and she's not suffering anymore. She's with God or whatever. It's the same event. My mother died. But my ego can attach. Victimhood. Good. You understand. Okay. So in my storehouse, in my memory now, all that exists is my mother died April 25th, 2001. Good. Relax your eyes, jaw, shoulders. Good. You understand. So as I change the memories, 
to, to cut the ego out of it. And I clean them and I shine the memories without ego involvement, without the ego telling the story. Relax your bellies. <laughs> it's so cute. You guys, your, your bellies get so tight when you're listening. Just relax that belly. That's just trying. But I know you're trying to listen to me and I love it. It's like, oh, I'm like kissing all your tiny, tight little bellies. <laughs> just big belly. When I clear that ego out of my memories, I say, you're not allowed to tell this story anymore. My memory sits cleanly on the shelf of memories in my organized memory. My mother died April 25th, 2001. That's the, that's it. And it feels better. Good. It feels better. Good. But now expand your lungs, shoulders back and down. And as you're clearing the memory, out of, I mean, sorry. As you're clearing, yeah. As you're clearing the ego out of the memories, he's not allowed to tell any more stories. Your memories are cleaner and clearer. Good. Shoulders back, down, and allow your lungs to expand. Good. We want to set you up for a very productive, let's call it, fall. A very productive fall. Fall season, autumn. A very productive autumn. Good. Big lungs, okay? And for what it's worth, I listened to a black nurse talk about the coronavirus for black men. She said that it affects them differently. And she said, black men, if you feel like you want to, the last thing they want to do is lay down, get up, take deep breaths, walking, walking, walking. So that was her advice from what she saw. She was a, I believe, New York City nurse. She made a video. This is the stuff that I watch. Okay. But she was definitely believing everything she was saying. She said, Black men, if you're tired, you want to lay down. That's the last thing you want to do. Get up, breathe deep, walk. It's walking, walking, deep breaths. Anyway, as we clear the ego out of your memories. You can breathe more. So we're setting you up for nice deep breaths now and through the whole fall. Good. And whatever's happening external to you is happening external to you. Allow it to happen. Remember, people have free will choices. They also have souls and teams that are taking them through whatever they're going through. Remember that what I do is free. And it's available to everyone who has access to YouTube or Facebook. Good. Relax your eyes, jaw, and shoulders. And I'm not the only one doing stuff like this. Just allow different individuals to exercise their free will choice. All right, good. And now, direct divine healing white energy to your intellect. You don't have to know where it is, just have an idea. Direct white, iridescent, rainbow, sparkly light. Highest, holiest, source, creator, energy, divine healing, energy, whatever you want to call it. To the int your intellect. Good. Now, in the intellect, you may feel the ego creeps around the edges of the intellect. Good. Just keep it out. Just push it away. Good. And as the divine healing energy is directed to the intellect, also send your your gratitude, your 900 vibration of gratitude and empowerment to your intellect. Relax your belly. The way the ego negatively affects or impacts your intellect 
is I'm afraid I'll be wrong. I'm afraid I'm wrong. I'm afraid that what I'm saying won't make sense or that I'll be wrong. Okay, so just sweep that out. Kick the ego out of the intellect. Relax your belly. Good, big belly breathing. Just sweep and clear the ego out of the intellect and all negativity out of the intellect. Applying gratitude. Now your intellect can be clear now. You can maintain a clear intellect. Just as a judge, upon hearing cases, has a, has a blank slate between cases. Here's each side good, impartially. So allow your intellect good to be a nice clean room or whatever you're seeing. Good. Directing that divine white light to the intellect and gratitude. Your gratitude from you to the intellect. <laughs> Roxanne's funny. And now feel your deep love for the intellect. Okay. Good. Relax your eyes, jaw, and shoulders. And the fourth aspect of the mind is the ego. We're not going to pretend it doesn't exist, but we're going to gather it. Gather, gather. I'm using um, my hand to sweep it from all my own ego. I'm just doing my own ego. God, I'm just gathering my ego from wherever it is. Sweeping it to one spot, just like I would sweep a floor, sweep all the dirt into a pile lovingly but just good relax the belly no trying just doing sweeping the ego maybe you want to bring it down sweeping the pile and then just put your hands around it keeping it contained first and i'll see where they take it and now imagine that the ego is like a magnet and it magnetizes more ego to itself. Okay. I read that, Mindy. I'm going to ask. Okay, so Mindy asks, how do you get the pain body out of the cellular memory? It brought pain up for me all of a sudden, okay. So sweep that pain. Okay, so the way they're showing me, if I have a, I have this swept pile of ego, right, that I put together. I see a, like an energy cord or something going from the pile out to what you're calling the pain body. So it's not, okay, it's in the heart area. Gotcha. So as we, so this is how they're showing me, but run it listen and then allow your true self to put it in your own context and then you can ask questions anybody can ask questions at this point so if i swept my ego from all corners of my life and all that means to me into a pile the pain body is not in the pile that i've swept there's a, a connecting link that goes from the pile for me it's out to the right into what's called a pain body. So it's like, it's like the pain body is like archived information to the right of my ego pile. Okay. And it's, it's actually shaped like a, like the physical body. So, so that it's not jumbled up in the pile that I've swept. Relax the belly. So the pain body, as they're showing me, it's like, if I, so, so my pain body is going to look different than yours. So my, all my car accidents and where I got hit in the head and all this, that's where I see impacts on my pain body. So I see my pain body 
and then you see your pain body. So see if you can see your pain body. Relax your eyes, John, shoulders. So I'm containing my ego with my hands around the ego pile that I've swept in front of me. Relax the belly. And off to my right, I see a pain body. And, and I feel that it's, it's important. We're not going to leave the pain body to where it's causing you pain. Okay, so, but we do want to leave the pain body set up so that I can see all my, all the impacts and all the pain and all the things that happen. So your pain body ha looks like what yours does. Okay, yeah. So relax your belly. The ego is going to get scared when we see the pain body. Okay, so you said brought pain up for me all of a sudden. Okay. So what they're saying, Mindy, is the pain body is important as archived information. Okay, let's see if I can. They're getting someone else that I can channel. That's more like a seems more doctory. Okay. Audio just froze. Relax your belly. Relax your shoulders. So the pain body scares people. It scares you into fearing it, but it's just information. So as we kill the ego, when we kill the ego, we'll be able to access the information in the pain body if we need it, but it won't be scary to do it. We won't feel The information in the pain body, my soul does not want to lose the information in the pain body. The, my soul wants me to always have available to me the information in the pain body. It just doesn't need to scare me anymore or cause me, um, there's an energy when, you, if you get scared, you know, if, it, if somebody like jumps out and you're like, <gasps> And your whole body <gasps> tenses up like my soul doesn't want that to happen to me if I'm looking at the pain body but it wants to keep the pain body intact so that all that information is always available to, available to me easily so I can see it without reacting to it again back to act not react okay so Roxanne says why can't we just let those archives leave with the ego as those lessons have already been learned. Okay, so that's a great question and that's giving me a, a good way into this information is what you're saying, why can't we just let those archives leave with the ego as those lessons have already been learned? And in asking that, Roxanne, is a beautiful way to ask, but well, that's, um, that's the judgment of good or bad. And, and what, what they're asking us to get to is not seeing the pain body because the word pain sounds awful and so we're going to say well that's bad make it go away just like these people are pissing me off make them go away instead of judging something as bad and then reacting to it this is bad um the soul wants access to the information and the and the pain of what it, what the ego would call suffering, the soul calls learning. So what the ego, so when they both look, when the ego and the soul look at the word pain, the ego says, that's bad, get rid of it. The soul looks at the same thing, pain, and says, that's beautiful, look at all the work I've done. So you're asking, why can't we let those archives go? Because the soul's like, that's my work. I did that. I'm proud or blah, blah, or whatever. So when I sang the whole Pono Pono for the first time, I sing, I'm sorry, please forgive me. You know, I'm sorry, please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. I was singing it over and over as you do with the whole Pono Pono. My soul started singing it to me for everything that I've gone through. 
It was, it was so grateful that I, I didn't kill myself when I was going through all this stuff. It was grateful to me that I stayed on the planet and kept, kept letting my soul provide me painful experiences so that it could learn. Okay. So it says, it says, so my soul was singing to the rest of me, what I, what I could call Carla, you know, the person, the body, mind, complex named Carla. My soul was singing to me. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. It was grateful that I didn't take myself off the planet because it was giving me hard experiences and I, I kept taking it and, and, um, I didn't feel like I was learning. <laughs> I felt like just kill me already. You know, that's not true anymore. Uh, I want to live to 120, 70 more years of my life so that I can teach and whatever comes out of me. Okay. Relax the belly. So when we say pain body, the ego is going to go, Oh no, get rid of it. Make it leave. I learned that lesson. Go. So everything is not lessons. Some of it is work. So the, the crap that I survived, okay, all the crap I survived, I learned things obviously from surviving, right? But that's a lot of work that the ego come, that, that my soul, like, wow, it was like so much work was done. So much work was done. And it was actually through the power of forgiving, I was trying to forgive, trying to forgive, trying to forgive. I didn't realize I have to forgive myself. That's why forgiving myself. So we bless all, including myself. Forgive all, including myself. Respect the free will choices of all, including myself in all directions of time. Good, relax the belly. We're pretty much done, but um, it's just like meat suit. When my client said, please don't say meat suit. It's just like kill the ego. And someone said, please don't say kill the ego, say shed. But shedding in the ego, it's not the same thing. You know? Because dogs shed hair, but they still have hair. It's still there. And any little ego can hide in the, in the blind spots. Yeah. Relax your belly. Just fall in love with yourself. This whole thing. You know, we're not male, female, white, black, whatever. Each, each individual human has an experience that's put together. We're all different. So even if you had a twin that looked exactly like you, raised by the same people, they would still have a different experience because they're interacting with other people. And they're interacting in their own life. And then through those, it's a really cool. It's just cool, man. It's just cool. Okay, so as you stay in the center of your vortex, powerfully deciding, choosing, choosing what I am available for. I'm available for the high vibrational realities. I remember, memory, that other people around me, everywhere, including my friends, my family, my husband, my wife, my children, other people around me are not choosing the same high vibrational reality. They may be allowing and they may be being available for lower vibrational reality. Okay, fighting or whatever. So my way, I guess, if I, if I listen to Keenan Bridges, my way of fighting is through empowering myself, staying in the center of my vortex, and saying, no, I'm not available for that. Low vibrational reality. And, you know, Laura Eisenhower, she says, we do not consent. I do not consent. You got to relax your belly. So I guess that's my way of fighting. So it's always about the law of attraction, focusing on what I want. Perfect freedom, health, you know, empowerment, Thousand level vibration. I want thousand level vibration. 
And the more of us that, the more of, we're the 99%. We are the masses. We're the masses. The more of the masses achieving thousand level vibrations, Relax your belly. Remember, it's, it's a big deal. If you get to 1,000, that's 2 million people you raise at a 200 courage vibration. Get yourself to 1,000. Use your energy, your time, energy, money. Use your time, energy, money, your resources to get yourself to 1,000. Your ego is going to say it's selfish. Kill the ego. Kill the ego. You're not welcome here anymore. I only need three aspects of my mind. My thinking and contemplating mind, my memory, and my intellect. Three. So spiritual world is three. Okay? Dual world, two. Physical world, duality, beautiful, yin-yang, two. To make it easy. Law of attraction, two. Desire or contrast. Desire raises my vibration. Contrast lowers my vibration. My meat suit my body, my beautiful organic biofeedback machine easily and clearly shows me desire and contrast. I pay attention to that. <laughs> yeah, okay, so Jennifer says, peace to the ego. Peace to the ego. And Lisa set, sent hers down the river. So she didn't kill it, but she cleared it out of her. And Carly, I think, stabbed hers. It's not alive. It's um, killing it. It's not the. It's not a mean thing to do, because it's working overtime in people. It's working really hard, and anything that dies goes back into the tau. The tau. We come from tau. We go back to tau. So, I guess I, I'm not trying to make make my beliefs your beliefs. So feel your own truth in this, but. We come from somewhere and we go back to that thing. So my mom and people who've died, I can still communicate with if they want to. So they just changed form. So they're still available. If, you know, to the same level as if they were, if my mom lived in California. And sometimes I call, I leave a voicemail, you know, she's not answering her phone. And then sometimes she does answer the phone. Or, you know, sometimes she calls me back if she's, so, you know, and, and other people, you know, somebody comes for healing. That's a good way. Roxanne sent it in a balloon and cut the ribbon. That's a good way. So, you know, these, these people who've passed, someone comes for a healing. And, and when they come for a healing, we invite in whoever wants to talk. So these, because there's stuff that I would never be able to know. And there's words that I would never, I'm not a wordsmith. All right. So allow everything. Okay. All right. So when you come across some shenanigans, <laughs> when you see some shenanigans happening, remember this is happening for me, not to me. And I just, and however you want to do it, I'm not available for this. I'm not available for these shenanigans. I do not consent. However it works. Just rem so I'm giving you all these different things to put into your memory. And your thinking and contemplative mind, which you love. When, when you find yourself dealing with shenanigans and your face wrinkles up a little bit, you're like, mm. oh, I'm in contrast. Mm, I don't like this. Ugh. Relax my belly, calm and center, use my beautiful thinking contemplative mind, using memory, going in and out of memory. What did Carlos say? Oh, shenanigans. Well, that's kind of funny. All right, these are shenanigans. My intellect is going to name it. This is shenanigans. And then I'm gonna, my thinking and contemplative mind is going to go back in and out of the very organized, beautiful room of memory. What phrase expression do I want to use in this case? Do I want to say I'm not available for that? Do I want to say I do not consent? Like this. Go ahead. That's it. All right. Have a great day.
Love ya.